Hey, I'm Jared, and you're watching How To Anime Studio. This is episode three of Workflow Basics. We are gonna animate Batman in this episode. We've designed him, and we've rigged him how we want. Let's get him moving. What are we gonna learn? Well, we're gonna learn animation fundamentals, very short, uh, a short version of that, and very a very basic uh, set of them. And then we're gonna learn about key poses and in-betweens. Finally, we got some blocking. What are keyframes? What are switches? What are cycles? There's a lot to learn, and this is just a very brief overview of what, what those are and what you really need to get started to get Batman moving. Let's start with some references. This book, The Animator's Survival Kit. Pick it up. It's by Richard Williams. I found mine for 10 bucks, and it's, it's way worth 10 bucks. Uh, it talks about traditional animation, but you can apply it directly to any computer animation that you're ever going to do. Second, another reference on the web. Google 12 basic, 12 basic principles of animation. Um, I'll put this in the description. This is going to give you a brief overview of the, of the 12 uh, kind of pillars of, of animation. Um, I'm going to focus on two of them. Anticipation and then follow through. There's a video I'll also put in the description called The Illusion of Life based on the book Illusion of Life by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. It shows anticipation really well. This block gets ready to move before it moves. So think about I'm anticipating moving before I actually move. It also shows follow through really well. If there are different parts of an object uh, made of different materials, they're going to move at different rates. They have different uh, mass or textures or materials, they will move differently. So if you apply that to Batman, his body and his arms and his cape are all different and therefore should move differently. Animation can be intimidating because you can do anything. So let's make it very simple. I'm gonna start Batman out of frame, out of, outside of this blue box. I'm gonna have him land like he's jumped from somewhere. He's gonna bounce up, and then he's gonna pose like a superhero should. So very simple. Frame zero in our timeline is where you can move it around, but nothing happens. Nothing happens because there's nothing that shows up here. And if I were to go forward to frame one where it matters, it resets. In frame one, if I was to do that same thing, there's automatically a keyframe being placed. Okay, there's a red and a black right here. The black is, hey, there's some animation in this cartoon. Red is that particular bone that you have highlighted. So it's kind of confusing what's happening here. Why are there two things happening right here? And you can see the icon next to it. If I were to move this arm, it's going to give me another channel because I've colored the bone uh, in that way. Um, so just know if we had colored bones, it, it would work that way. If we wanted to move the legs, um, you know, maybe we colored the, the targets right there and, and so on. So I'm going to select these keyframes and delete them. So now I have no animation. And before I do any animation, I'm going to do something called blocking. Okay, what, what's going to happen and when? This guy right here is a marker. And I'm going to make a marker on frame one. And I'm going to say, OK, start. All right, I like to do things in four frames. Uh, for some reason, I'm not sure why. One, two, three, four. So I can just go forward four. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to put another marker. And I'm going to say, land. OK. One, two, three, four. And then I'll say, up. One, two, three, four. Maybe five, six, seven, eight maybe we do something like he kind of settles. Maybe we can kind of bounce him up and down a little bit. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to set this area for anticipation. Anticipation, I spelled it right. I'm a horrible speller. Okay, so he's gonna anticipate his hero pose and then he's going to, one, two, three, four, he's going to pose. We'll call that hero pose. Next, we're going to add some keyframes and start, start uh, putting in some key poses. Um, I'm going to zoom in 
to my timeline and right click and I can drag I can drag the timeline um, back and forth. I'm gonna go to frame one and I'm gonna put a key pose in. If I scroll down, I can um, I can see more of this. I want him to be off the frame. Make sure that you're on the Batman bone layer. I can actually hide everything else. That's all I need to see. And I need to have my manipulate bones tool. So on frame one, I'm gonna drag him out of frame. So nothing is there. These bones will not show up. Notice in our timeline, some keyframes have been added. Those channels have been added. Okay. What is he gonna look like when he's falling? Think about that uh, follow through that we've been talking about. So when he's falling, I don't know if you've fallen from a building, but I'm probably going to be doing something like this. Ah, have my arms up. Okay, because those are those are less weight and they're they're following his his body. His feet probably are going to be pointed down. I'm getting more channels, more keyframes. And then finally my cape is probably straight up and down. And that's okay. We won't see this. But I just want to get get the conversation started about that that follow through. What what's really going to happen to all the other pieces? Okay, that's a key pose. That's key pose number 1 of where we start. Okay? I'm going to go over to frame number that's 5 where he lands. Okay? So I'm just going to I want to bring this main controller down to to the ground and I'm going to have him him land right there. Okay? And the computer is going to fill in the in-betweens for us. Sometimes they work, sometimes we have to tweak them. But we're going to leave them for now. Let's get this pose figured out. So go to the, your key poses and figure those out first. Okay, so when he lands, his feet should land. I'm going to put his... Um, his other foot like that, and I do, you know, obviously this is a problem here. We don't want that. That's a broken, broken leg. Um, I can fix that by going to this bone here and then dragging to the right with the transform bone tool. Okay, it's going to put another keyframe right there, but when he lands, that's what I want. So if, uh, if yours isn't doing it, then drag this bone right here to to the right and it'll it should fix it okay and his arm should be up maybe even more so up maybe his cape is even more so up that's fine it's adding keyframes to everywhere get get him where you want him that is landing okay so our key pose is figured out i'm going to introduce a new keyboard shortcut uh, command f will freeze a pose. So if I went to bone freeze pose, that's going to freeze every bone that I have on the screen that I can see. I can also freeze a pose here. Nothing is happening in my timeline, but eventually you'll see and I'll point it out. Oh, it added a keyframe. Okay. Here, he's going to come up. Here is where we can see this follow through. He's going to come up. Maybe I'll extend him past where, where normal is, up here. Okay, added a keyframe there. What's gonna happen to his arms and his cape? Well, they're gonna continue moving downward as his body starts to go upward. So this will take a little bit of, of trial and error, but I'm gonna bring his arms actually down and I'm gonna bring his cape down. Let's see how that works. Okay, right here, I don't have a keyframe so I'm going to get in the habit of pressing Control or Command F, and that'll add keyframes for everything, just in case you don't want things to start floating around if you don't have keyframes um, from this pose to this pose, because it will. If you find, oh, something's moving in between, and I didn't want that, it's because you didn't add a uh, freeze pose to that particular spot. Okay, let's preview this. You can go to frame one and press play. Yeah, pretty good so far. He's landing. His body's coming up, and his arms and cape are going down. Okay, so let's add that he's going to 
he's going to eventually settle kind of down here where he's more normal. And maybe his arms come up and his cape might might be here. Something like that. So we'll preview it again. So he's got a little bit of bounce to him now. Again, I'm going to freeze pose there. Keep an eye out for um, objects. If you were to view this as a silhouette, that hand right there would be hidden. So I'm going to bring that out. Something like that. Okay, let's work on the anticipation and the hero pose. Um, I think there's a little bit too much time here. So what I can do is I can select and drag these to wherever I want to. Let's try four again. One, two, three, four. So anticipate is going to have um, four frames. And then we're going to have a hero pose happening around right here. So, so from settling, he's going to anticipate. And then he's going to go up to his hero pose. So how's he going to anticipate this? He's probably going to bend his knees. And his arms are going to go up. If you have no idea what to do, get up and act it out. That's the simplest way to do it. What would happen if you made a hero pose? And what's your anticipation going to be? I would probably do this. Maybe even you're, you're going to bend your body a little bit. I'm pressing option so it only rotates the specific bones. If you, if, you, uh, if you don't, it'll rotate several bones. The cape might whip this way. Freeze pose. Okay, so it's gonna go mm. And then up here, I'm gonna make this extreme awesome pose. Like, kinda like, he's super tough. Rah. Okay, I'm gonna get the cape in position to where it can wave. And I want eh, maybe like in the uppermost position. We'll talk about cycles in a little bit. Something along those lines. That's our hero pose. So again, he settles and then he anticipates and then he goes rah up like that. Okay, preview so far. Pretty good. Let's add some in betweens in between. These are our key frames and our key poses that we wanted. In between those key poses, there's an, there's an opportunity to add more animation. So if you can avoid key frames and cluttering your timeline, great. But you will need to go through and, and add something. Um, there's, there are things happening in between the key poses. Hit enter and deselect any. Z, make sure you still have that. Save if you haven't. Okay, right here, um, I want his legs, his feet to be pointed straight down. What's that is gonna do right here? It added a keyframe to the purple channel. That's an in-between. When he comes down and lands, he kinda, he goes off frame and, and that's okay, we'll fix that in a, in a bit, but that's a little more realistic. He's gonna, he's gonna touch down and land like that. Okay, that's a good in-between. How about in-between here? What can we do with that? Maybe his arms don't come down. Nope. Maybe they don't come down so um, immediately. And maybe his cape kind of snaps right here. Maybe, maybe that happens. So again, it's going to add some in-between frames right there. I'm, I don't freeze my pose there because I have my keyframes already figured out. And... Uh, it, it shouldn't affect a whole lot. So how about here when he settles? So I'm gonna I'm gonna play it first. What if we added he goes his body goes down and his arms go up. What if we made it a little more extreme? So we bring his arms up and we made his body go down to bend. And then it's gonna go down, up, like that. So it's even bouncier. That's kinda cool. 
How about if the cape also waved way over here? Because it's snapping all the way. Give it a little more life. Snap, and then it's going to go back there. I like that. Let's play that. So the, the cape kind of wiggles, and, and he's got another bounce to him just because I added one in between. It's pretty simple. I can go through and add more in-betweens if I really want to, but it just makes things complicated. Okay, how about an in-between here? What if he... I'm going to option drag this guy. What if he, what if he gets down even lower? So there's all sorts of secondary action happening there now. That's pretty interesting. And what I like to do is I like to go, I like to overshoot the action and then it comes back. So right here, instead of really an in-between, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overshoot the action. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to just exaggerate the heck out of this thing. And then my keyframe that I already added will bring me back. So he's anticipating. And right here, he overshoots it a little bit and then he comes back down. Awesome. Let's preview that. That's pretty cool. We're going to put a cycle in now for the cape. If we could have this thing kind of flap in the wind for the rest of the remainder of our animation, however long that might be, that'd be helpful. So I'm going to go put a keyframe and uh, freeze the pose right there. And now I'm all, all I'm concerned is with this cape section here. So maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. And... Uh, this will be my channel. I believe it's the yellow, the yellow channel. Okay, so I'm going to do, th this is my up pose for the cape. I'm going to go forward, one, two, three, four. And I'm just going to control this guy, right, just for the beginning. I'm going to go down one. Let's say that's the middle. One, two, three, four. And maybe down. That's the bottom. One, two, three, four. I could come up and do the middle again and then one, two, three, four. It'll come, I need a loop. I need it to come back simil in a similar place. Here's what I can do. I have this bone selected and I can copy that frame right there and paste. So it should go from here, down, down, middle, up. You can adjust how you want to, but those are the key poses. Then I can start putting in the in-betweens and the follow-through from the back of the cape. Think about how fabric would flow. The front, the, the big part of the fabric would move first, and then these two would follow. So let's do some of that. I'm going to come here to my key pose, holding option. I'm going to bring these back a little bit. So those are, those are whipping. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. Come to my next one. Then they're going to be down because it's whipping up. So you bring these down a bit. And in the next one, they'll come back up to where they started. And you can play around. You know, you can do this for however long you want to. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of those bones. And I'm going to put a cycle in. I want it to cycle from this frame, which is 41 in my animation, all the way to back to 25 and then loop. Okay, so I'm going to go to 41, select my yellow keyframe, right click, cycle, and then I get a uh, dialog box. This red line right here is telling you, okay, how far is it going to go back to cycle? So I want it to go back to the absolute frame of 25. And that's where I wanted it to go. And it's not cycling everything, it's just cycling the frame, the the cape and it should keep going there's no animation out here but it's cycling so it'll go until the end of the of the animation let's learn a little bit about switch layers we have a switch layer that we put in there so if you go to your batman bone layer and then go to your switch layer let's have his eyes turn off and on so if i hit escape i can kind of zoom into where his eyes are located all right I'm going to also zoom into my timeline. At frame one, he probably doesn't need to have his eyes open. I'd be frightened, so my eyes would be closed. Okay, 
this hold frame right here will tell you that it's gonna gonna last until you change it. Zoom out a little bit. I want him to open his eyes right after he lands. So I'm gonna right click and open. Okay, got a new frame that's open. All right, so that looks pretty good. I want him to kind of, like he might be uh, kind of gearing up for this big pose, so he might maybe close his eyes there. And maybe right there he opens them again. And maybe we have a couple of blinks for the rest of the cartoon. So I'm going to maybe go forward to 50 or so. Close his eyes. A blink, I like to have two frames. Okay, and then I'm just gonna copy and paste some blinks randomly. You could also do a cycle on this one if you wanted to. And, um, you know, how long do you want your cartoon to be? Mine's 240 frames. I think that's what we set up. So, so now, notice he's blinking however we pasted that. All right, when he does into his hero pose right here, I think he should be looking a little more to our left. Right now, his face doesn't move. His Nothing moves on his face. So we could definitely animate that. More advanced uh, head turns use smart bones. But we're just going to do a very simple version of that. We are going to turn his eyes, mouth, and parts of his body from the anticipate to the hero pose right here. So it's really one, two, three, four frames right here we're going to use to turn. All right, we're gonna do a different type of animation here. So let's start with the eyes. I'm gonna use my layer, uh, transform layer tool, or M, and I'm going to press in the middle of this big box. So if I, if I look at this, I can, I can translate, I can resize, or I can rotate this layer, which is my eyes. All I wanna do is move it a little bit in four frames. When I click, it's gonna, again, put a keyframe in the channel. I'm gonna go forward four frames, one, two, three, four, and position those eyes where I want them. You can see that there's a path right here of what's gonna happen. So once I go here, it's real subtle, but that's what we want. We want him kind of looking off in the distance. Now, it looks pretty goofy because his mouth and the tip of his mask and his ears and everything else isn't turning, so let's turn everything else too. Those are just on different layers. Shortcut of Option right click will give you the mouth. I still have my Manipulate, uh, my Transform Layer tool. Click, one, two, three, four. Move it where you want it. What else do we need to do? We need to do part of the torso. Now, <clears throat> if I move it with the Layer tool, It'll move everything. I don't want that. I want to move some points on my layer. I need to turn on my points, uh, my show curves button here. I want to move this point and some points of the, probably the front cape and then maybe the ears. Okay, so let's move this guy here. So I'm gonna click on that point, go forward four frames and figure out where that's gonna go. Let's do the same thing with the ears. Click, that'll add a keyframe. We have another channel here, so you can see there's several things moving, and then figure out where you want that to go. Something like that. And then last, maybe the front cape, and, and maybe even the belt. Let's move the belt. So it looks like his whole body's kind of shifting. And then finally, front cape, I'm going to Command F. That'll lock that pose. Just like a bone pose, you can lock points. Okay, I'm going to select my Batman layer, hit Escape, and take a look. Now he's looking 
like a bouse to the left. All right. Last but not least, he's too big. We need to make him smaller. Go to frame zero, select the Batman layer, get your uh, transform layer tool, and let's make him smaller. This doesn't affect animation at all. If you do it out here in the timeline, it will. So just know where you're doing that. <clears throat> So I made him smaller, and now his feet are sticking down. So I might need to, ma to change that. That's fine. I'm going to go to my bone tool, uh, manipulate bone tool, and move his whole body up a little bit. Okay, so this is our final animation. Okay, you've completed animation on Batman. Nice work. I hope this was entertaining, fun, informative and really helps you get started with this amazing software. I feel like more people should be using it and it's a matter of just learning the basics and getting started with something fun and uh, making some cool work. If you like these, again, let me know. Uh, if you make an animation, post it in comments or if you make something completely original, I'd love to hear about it and I'd love to hear some uh, constructive criticism about these tutorials. These are my first tutorials. I know I can improve. What would you want to see from me? And then what else do you want to learn? Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.